blue table fans. Thanksgiving shockwave of happiness. So I'm going to do a couple of rambles today. Hold on, is this high enough? Nobody knows. All right, so uh, first off, um, it's BTP is coming up on 10 years. I started painting unofficially in 2003, and I officially started Blue Table Painting January 1st, 2004. And um, many people ask where I got the name, uh, and that is, um, originally I had a Yahoo group called Gately's Painting Table, and, you know, I just had a couple guys down at the shop that would, um, you know, uh, pay me this and that in order to, uh, to paint up their, their armies or whatever. And uh, so I kept, uh, kept a very small uh, news group, uh, for those of you that remember those. And um, it was called Gately's Painting Table. So, uh, when, I, so when I started uh, my company, or was trying to think of a name, um, I wanted to pick a color and an object and um, that it had to be two things where people couldn't misspell them. They were very simple so that uh, there wouldn't be any, so when you said it, people wouldn't type in the wrong thing they, for the web address because they wouldn't be, able to, wouldn't be able to do it. Now, originally, I was going to call it Blue Door Painting, and uh, that's because way back in the uh, late 90s, I had a game shop in uh, southern Oregon uh, called uh, Invincible War Games. Ah! Amazing. Um, so, uh, which, in fact, I, I wish that I called it Invincible Games. That, I think that would have had a better flow to it. So uh, I do have a fantasy that someday I might start that up again. So anyway, um, Invincible War Games, uh, I refurbished this second floor of this building uh, on a shoestring, something I've repeated many times over the years. And um, so and I painted the door. There's a door at the bottom of the steps. It was this old, like... I don't know, it must have been like 50-year-old door. And I painted it royal blue. Uh, hold on a second. All right, so uh, today's Thanksgiving. And uh, first off, I thought that uh, for a while I'd been like percolating this thing where I want to do a 10-year retrospective. <gasps> ah! and, um, and I know a lot of people get a lot out of my business rambles. Isn't it great to have me around? And... Um, so, and, but then I was like, well, guy, who are the people and circumstances that have helped me throughout the years? So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to talk about all the great people that I've met, and uh, actually not all of them because I'm bound to forget somebody. So if you're watching this and you're like, but Sean, what about me? Well, I'm sorry. Um, hopefully I will get to you in a subsequent version of this if I even remember because anybody that knows me, uh, knows that I tend to not keep a lot stored on my hard drive. And uh, it's uh, mostly a blessing, a little bit of a curse. Um, and, uh, but it does help me from not... Yeah, I, do, I don't remember stuff from three months ago. So that, uh, that, that really helps. I, guy, I just I have no idea what it must be like going through life, you know, having to carry a lot of baggage. So, uh, so okay, I, so I started in... Um, uh, I guess unofficially um, uh, in 2003 and so the first person that helped me along was my dad and um, he was diagnosed with cancer in uh, terminal cancer in the summer of 2003 so uh, I then lived in California and uh, I had you know just a couple of little kids and um, you know I just uh, every, every day on my hour drive back from work in East Palo Alto to Livermore, uh, California, uh, I would call him up, talk to him for a little while. Um, yeah, pretty pretty much every day, you know. And uh, my big advice to someone is, if you're estranged from relatives, um, unless they're toxic, um, th I just you know keep at least keep a Christmas card level in touch, and uh, that'll make it so that you know if. They, if they're on their deathbed, it'll be easy to get that reconciliation rather than uh, just uh, letting things kind of fester, you know. So anyway, uh, not to dwell on that, but he gave me uh, not a lot of advice, but he gave me a lot of encouragement, you know. And um, he said, uh, 
He said that I should follow my dreams. And, oh, and that's, that's the one scene I remember. Is I, vi- I actually flew out to Oregon twice, uh, once just to visit uh, after the news. And uh, the other one was actually, you know, when things were winding down. Um, and that one, that was brutal. So, whew. Um, so anyway, but the first one was, uh, he was very coherent. And uh, we were on this balcony and um, he, uh, he was with his new wife, and um, relatively, I guess. And anyway, so, and he had this truck down in the driveway. And, oh, and by the way, this was in the back woods of Oregon. Like, you had to like, go up this canyon out into the woods to get to this place, this cabin. And um, so he's got that tree. He's like, you know what? I just got this truck like six months ago. And he's like, I waited all this time. And, you know... And it's like, here I am a year from retirement, you know, and I didn't, I didn't enjoy my life. I didn't just do what it is that I wanted to do when I had the time to do it. And boy, that just, that just drilled right into my brain. And it was like, carpe diem, seize the day, son. Uh, do, follow your dreams and do what you, do what you love most. And boy, that advice can just be refreshed because sometimes the thing that you're doing, uh, that's not that was your dream, but maybe, you know, maybe it's time to, uh, to expand on that, to do something even greater. Um, so that's, that's a toughie. So first would be my dad. He, um, really infused me with that entrepreneurial spirit and kind of pushed me to, to do that. Um, so anyway, so I started in January and, um, pretty much, uh, in, um, June of that year, we had gotten pre-approved for a loan. We're like, where shall we live? Uh, Tammy, my wife, uh, and uh, we're coming up on 20 years, by the way. Next, next year, I'm, whoa, oh my gosh, I'm only four months away from my 20-year anniversary. Yikes! Um, so anyway, um, uh, so we moved out to Utah. She's got a lot of relatives out here. Um, I picked up a little office uh, downtown Spanish Fork, and, um, you know, not... It was like seven, eight hundred square feet there. So, um, so I hired uh, people just part time to help me out. And uh, Dallas, Dallas was, uh, and she was just always so cheerful and so helpful. And you know, when I was feeling down or you know I had you know problems because you know starting a new business ain't easy, she would always be there for me and always try and come through and in her own uh, simple and cheerful way. So that was awesome. Uh, Oh my gosh, I've had so much help and advice over the years, just amazing. Uh, Clint uh, was a um, down the street neighbor of ours um, who we knew from our ward. And he he actually had a, some kind of uh, internet uh, educational business and he had sold that and made his little fortune from it. And so he came down to give me business advice all the time, to mentor me. He was my first business mentor. And uh, I remember sitting with him, because he would ask me questions, like a good men- mentor does, and make you think about things. And uh, I remember I had a whiteboard, and I was sitting at my desk, and like turned around, and I was showing him. And I was like, okay, here's how it's going to work. There's going to be one person. They're going to answer the emails and do all of that administrative. And then... Huh? Bear with me now. There will be a different person that does the assembly, and that person does only the assembly of the models. And now so obvious, you know, to uh, divide the roles. But at the time, this uh, miniatures painting and assembly was all one-man band. In fact, it mostly is one-man band still, where the one person does every single part of the process. And um, so Clint really helped me. He encouraged me. Uh, later on, he's still around. I still see him once in a while when I'm out and about, and uh, so he really he really helped me along. And I had a lot of I had a lot of good people uh, working for me in those in those early years, and of course uh, I'm very grateful for my wife. She has stuck with it. She she takes the because uh, when you own your own business, it goes like this. You know, well ideally it goes like this. It's kind of like a kind of like an up and down, but it's generally going up. And uh, she has just, she's always taken the bad news really nicely and doesn't, you know, doesn't really, 
you know, make me feel bad about myself. She's always very encouraging, even when things are down. She's like, thank you, you know, you're such a great provider. And um, Tammy has just been so wonderful to me these many, many years. Just, I can't imagine having a better, more supportive, more forgiving, um, more encouraging uh, partner to have. And uh, she's, she's really amazing. So, um, all right, so uh, basically I moved out of that little office. I moved into a, a bigger office that was beautiful and wonderful. And um, of course, a lot of good people came along and you know helped uh, improve systems. And um, but then that didn't do well. In 2008, the economy kind of contracted. And uh, now, if uh, it's, you got to be careful to um, not blame outside situations. Always, and I don't mean blame yourself either. Always look for the good in the situation because. Uh, you, can, you can choose to believe and perceive things however it is that you want. Despite the, despite the circumstances, I am always prosperous. That can be a truth. That can be your truth. And so, um, anyway, so I ended up losing my big office. I actually had to shrink down. And uh, that, really, that really burned me because... Um, because the accountants from upstairs, uh, effectively a contrived, non-productive, uh, uh, what's, what's it called, non-productive profession. Uh, in, in other words, uh, I, I've always viewed accountants, at least tax accountants, that, that their whole existence uh, comes from the f something that does or wouldn't normally exist. Like, you don't, you don't need that necessarily, like you need shoes or food you know, or transportation. So, um, but a good accountant, a regular accountant is awesome. And uh, I'll talk about that later on my business ramble. Um, so uh, let's see here. So anyway, um, so that was a really sad, I'm, set, I'm setting it up, setting it up for some gratitude. So that was a very hard time in my life was uh, very, the very end of 2007 and the beginning of 2008 was just so rough. It was, in fact, I'd call, I'd call winter uh, 2007, 2008, one of the lowest points of my life and one of the lowest points, certainly one of the lowest points of blue table painting, the beginning of the badger hole uh, that effectively, you know, everything had collapsed and I was, you know, just, I was really questioning myself. I was... Um, I was like, you know, well, maybe I'm not worth being around, you know, maybe I'm not, I'm not fit to lead a company, even a small one, and so I basically I just shrunk down right, basically, to pretty much by myself, and um, so at the time, I had, I had one artist stick with the company, and uh, that was Heather. Some of you may remember her, her from old videos, and Heather was one of the best people to me, always understanding always ready to do her work, always ready with a positive vibe and an encouraging word. And she had MS. So she was like, I mean, there were days where, uh, you know, we would have to like carry her to her car and drive her home, you know, and I actually helped her move twice. And, uh, you know, she was definitely one of the people that I was, that I was closer to. And uh, so she's always, always positive, really, really a good person and um, willing to help out however was needed. So Heather, I think worked for us for like four or five years, something like that. So anyway, so long about the badger hole time, uh, I was like, all right, well, I need an assistant here, someone to you know answer emails, pack the packages, take out the trash, do the digital photography, all of that, so I could concentrate on corresponding with clients, da 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 so, um, Based, so along, so I started interviewing. Uh, I actually had a, uh, I did a series of interviews, and my top pick um, uh, imploded in a day. So, um, and then along came Sarah. So Sarah has been one of the more influential people in my life, and has improved my life and uh, helped me to see things in a different way. Notably, uh, I drink lots of water. So if for no other reason. Uh, that's how my life was changed by Sarah. You guys, anybody that's followed this channel, you know the whole history 
uh, behind Sarah. She showed up at a time when I was just absolutely at, I don't know, was, did I, have I had a lower point in my life? I don't think so. I don't, possibly the lowest point of my life. Sarah showed up and, and encouraged me. She was like, no, you are worthwhile. You, uh, you know, you are going to be successful. You know, the things that you've built are so far are really amazing. And, um, and so she really uh, helped me get, kind of piece myself back together again. So we worked together in the Badger Hole, uh, which was a basement office with no windows. Um, and we were, we were there like 20 to 30 hours a week uh, working in the same room for like a year and a half. And I got to tell you, that was my privilege uh, to get to know Sarah and uh, to, because she had, you know, she's, uh, she's one of the more amazing people that you're going to meet in life if you ever get a chance to, uh, to meet her. So anyway, uh, so we, uh, one day um, she says, um, hey, let's, uh, oh, I say, hey, uh, do you need anything to make your life better here? And she's like, I need a window. So we ended up going to, uh, we ended up moving about six blocks to uh, the, what I call the 300 North building, second story. Uh, great view, well, better view. than the, Everything looked great after the badger hole, right? And uh, so we renovated that. I sold off some of my armies. I rounded up uh, about, uh, I think it is $4,000. And, uh, you know, we recarpeted, we repainted, we got some furniture in there. And uh, everything, everything completely by a shoestring. And uh, that is, I mean, we actually, whenever we go to Cold Stone uh, for Shake Thursdays, we actually walk by there. And um, so, and let's not forget uh, mini wargaming. Matthew and Dave have been very kind and very generous to us. They are, um, I think they're a, a natural talent and they are a great asset to the wargaming community. And so, yes, definitely one of the people that I'm grateful that I met along the way. All right, so another, um, this isn't a person, it's a family. Uh, in our neighborhood, uh, there's a family called the Barrows. And when we first moved here, our house wasn't ready. And they took us in and fed us and housed us for four months for nothing and they were just incredible we're still great friends of that family uh, but they uh, they they've really helped me along the way as well and uh, you know always with a word of encouragement and always some always a kindness you know and sometimes you just need that you need that little shot of self-esteem you know and um, so anyway so um, yeah we refurbished that uh, we had our adventures and uh, which those of you that follow the channel, you know well uh, what those are. So um, Sarah's definitely one of the people that, uh, that I'm, I'm glad that I was able, able to meet. And um, so, uh, yeah, who, guy, who's next? Well, I know I'm forgetting a lot of people. Well, there's, uh, of course, um, I've had lots of people come into the business and, you know, they, um, they work in a certain capacity and uh, they, they improve their, probably about one person in six actually comes in and really improves their station. They think of a better way to paint things. They think of, you know, some kind of technique. Uh, they uh, improve spreadsheets. We had uh, the pricing sheets uh, have been improved over the years by the various people that have used them. And uh, so that's, that's, really, that's really super. Uh, Ren, Ren has been uh, with me since late 2007, 2008, 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, whoa, six years, holy crap, yeah, and uh, so Ren has been a staple, he did leave for Texas for a while, uh, but Ren has just been uh, an absolute um, pillar of the community, uh, you know, he's always here and he's and there's like, there's people that see, see past the current challenges of the company uh, because they're all, if you're going to grow your company, guess what? It's a fight. And uh, I wish it weren't that way, but uh, it, it really, there's always challenges. There's things to like work out. And um, 
So uh, Ren has just been so great. He's, he's always encouraging. Like there can be there can be a staff meeting where it's like a whole grumble fest, you know. And Ren will just come up and he'll just be like, "Sean, thank you for all you do. I really appreciate you. Thanks for the job." And uh, that's like that's amazing. That is so helpful and so nice. And uh, I've had I've actually had a lot of people like that over the years who have you know they they see past the challenge and uh, they see how awesome it is to be a part of something uh, like Blue Table Painting. Blue Table Painting is a very special company. It's uh, it's really a work of art, and uh, it's funny because people tend to come back to it. You know, they might leave, but they make, they make this big circle, and they might not come work here, but you see them again, like Cameron. Cameron was an awesome art director. Uh, Cameron actually uh, deserves a mention in this list because he actually changed our painting style. Uh, we used to use uh, glazes, uh, which um, as a method I invented and has its merits, um, but uh, he, you know, he saw the limitations of that and so he brought kind of a conventional painting style uh, to the studio, which I think was I think was good. I think uh, I think that really that really did us well. So um, wow, um, okay. Um, so uh, in 2010, I brought on Shannon, and Shannon definitely is a pillar of the community. Uh, she's been there. She's been there in those you know the, those tunnels, those dark moments. You know, to just uh, give a word of encouragement. She's very, she's very down to earth. She is um, very. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, she, as long as it's not too early in the morning, she's uh, she's quick with a smile. She's her laughter really brings something to the whole studio. And I think there, she she has this talent for bringing people around, for uh, adding a good perspective. To things, so definitely one of the more profound humans that I've met on this on this earth. Um, okay, so uh, let's see here. Uh, you know, let's backtrack to the badger hole. That was a really uh, really dark period of my life, and uh, so I want to thank. Actually, are you ready for this? I want to thank the IRS uh, because uh, my brief. I and I've I, I've never had an agent be unpleasant. And, but their existence and my interaction with them, uh, even though it may be brief, um, and it's always like formal, like, oh, by the way, you know, what about this? And then you respond, and you know, they uh, they actually got me into politics, and uh, I was very active in politics uh, as um, I guess you might call a libertarian type person, a freedom loving person, and uh, by a pretty strict definition of that and uh, strict constitutionalist. And uh, so from 2008 to 2000, late 2011, very, 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 very active. And that was great, it grew me as a person. Uh, of course I have, not of course, but uh, as you may have noticed, I don't talk much about it. I am, I'm, ta I'm taking a break from it because it takes a lot of mental energy and I'm focusing my mental energy into into other things right now. And um, so, okay, what else? Uh, I don't want to name a name here, uh, but we did have somebody who helped us uh, refurbish this building, and uh, he was extremely helpful, uh, helped me learn how to, uh, how to, you know, work with a project like that, see things from a different perspective. And um, so, so you know who you are. Thank you very much. Wow, I feel like this is a really long Oscar speech. Okay, it's like, um, Sean, you didn't win anything, buddy. But uh, guess what? A lot, like a thousand people are going to watch this video all the way through. Some people multiple times. Some people are going to just keep it running on a loop, on a playlist, and, uh, and go to sleep at night to the soft sounds of my dulcet voice. So, um, okay, so there's that. Um, yeah, and uh, I have a, um, another business mentor. He's been with me for a couple of years. Uh, his name is Bill, and he actually helped me uh, understand how to set up this whole deal for this building. 
Uh, for those of you new to the program, uh, this wonderful, it's uh, 10,000 square feet, right? And this is a dream. This is a, literally, I'm standing in the middle of a dream come true. It's amazing. What the heck? It is, because for years I dreamed of this. How beautiful, how light, how open it would be. Uh, and, and to have these tables, I have five tables permanently set up right here. And there's plenty of room. We could have like a whole tournament here. It's amazing. More room than we know what to do. with so much room for growth. And uh, blue table painting has been, uh, so far, and here's to another 20 years, uh, has been this amazing journey. Just absolutely outstanding. And in my life, I'm like, you know, no matter how good things are, I'm always like worried about something. It's like I... I like I fixate on something, and if that gets solved, I fixate on something else. So there's, there's always just this kind of little ball of worry going on. And uh, I've been working very hard to change my mindset over the last year and a half, uh, since last June, actually, um, to, to change how I see things. And gratitude is a huge, huge part of that. Because then otherwise, I'm always just complaining about something. That's the opposite of gratitude, is griping about whatever it is. Never happy. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I gotta, I gotta get rid of that. I mean, it's one thing to come in and just get to work. But boy, whistle while you work. Get, you know, be up. And uh, I have to say, I've gotten a ton better about that. I mean, I used to just, boy, it would be dark and the dark daggers would be closing in on me at night sometimes. And, uh, and now that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty much gone over the last six months, you know, because I, I work very, I'm very careful about my mental state and uh, I put good things in. And, you know, what's funny is, because uh, I was like, why aren't there ever movies where everything goes right? Well, Sean, that wouldn't be interesting. There would be no conflict. There would be no story. Okay, maybe so, but why hasn't there ever been one made? Does that even exist? You'd think at least someone would make like an, you know, like an art film where it's like everything goes good for this person. No, it's all something that's like, that's a clue somehow. Something's going on with this reality that it's like that. And uh, so for me, that's been a quest. What the heck is going on here? What is the point of all this? You know, and um, well, maybe you don't know. So, uh, okay, so that's my preliminary list of all the people that I'm grateful for. Uh, excuse me, a portion of the people that I'm grateful for and, um, you know, that have been, that have been an influence uh, on me. So, um, yeah, that I'm, that I'm grateful for. And I am so, I am so fortunate. Let me paint you a picture of my life. Uh, granted... Uh, there are the stresses of owning a small business. I wish things were like more even, you know, because it's like, guy, it's just a such a roller coaster. What the heck? And um, you know, sometimes I'm like, why can't it just be, you know, kind of the same thing, like even, like not so much worry from week to week. And uh, but you know. Uh, that probably, to, from, in one way or another, that just comes from with, within me. So, um, anyway, my awesome life is, because sometimes I think about it, I'm like, wow, that, that, is, that is pretty awesome. Because uh, if you think about it, um, you know, when I was going to college, I didn't know what I would do. This is the first time in my life where, okay, I may do other things after this. Um, you know, I've got different ideas for, you know, other projects, certainly. Um, but this, this uh, blue table painting, uh, as far as I can tell, well, I, I don't think this can die. In one incarnation or another, it's going to, it's gonna, it has a life of its own. It's literally incorporated. It's its own thing. And um, so how fortunate am I that I, like, I, I, I don't worry. I, I'm, not, I'm not at a job wishing I were doing something else. I'm not at college wishing I had my after college job. I'm living it. It's, coming in here is fantastic. A bad day at BTP is better than a good day at any other place. And at least for me, because this is my, this is my element. I just, I feel so at home here. 
And uh, in fact, I mean, it's Thanksgiving, and uh, granted, I'm not really needed at the house for this couple of hours. I just came down to uh, make these videos without so much background noise. Um, and, uh, but, uh, you know, it's a six minute drive to my house. I have two stop signs in residential zones between here and my house. Isn't that amazing? And, and there's, a, there's a, even an amazing view with like trees and mountains and the, you can kind of, at certain points, you can see the valley um, between the houses. And I'm just like, this is amazing. And I live in a great neighborhood and my family is just outstanding. You know, when I was, uh, when I was uh, young un and unmarried, well, first off, I didn't want to get married. And secondly, um, uh, I didn't want to have kids. And, uh, but now that, cause all the things that I was worried about, like, cause I saw some parents having trouble with their kids. I don't have those troubles. My kids are awesome. They are so affectionate and obedient and responsive and fun and creative. They are just, I have four kids ages four to 14. And I just, I love getting home. In fact, uh, I get home and I open the garage door and as I drive in, I like honk my horn, like, I, like it's a parade. Da 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 dee 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 And it's really loud because my new car has this awesome horn. And, uh, and the kids like pour out of the, uh, the garage door, at, uh, excuse me, the door to the house, you know, and they're just like cheerleaders, yay, dad's home. So that's awesome. You just, you cannot beat that. And, um, you know, my wife is just so accepting and loving and kind and fun and vivacious. It's just really, really, really absolutely super. And uh, quite frankly, the only thing now is like, well, I, uh, I, wanna, I wanna play the games more. That's what I gotta do. But I was listening to, um, what's his name, Tony Robbins, and he's like, you have your musts, not your shoulds. And so if, like, if you're in, not in a relationship that you want, guess what? It's not that important to you. And, uh, and I was like, all right, so same thing with me. If, if it's a must that I play two games a week and have an RPG that I run every week, that will happen. I will make that happen. Well, and I, how could I not? I, you know, I've got time to watch Star Trek every night. You know? Of course, that's kind of decompression right there where you literally don't have to, have to do anything. So uh, my life is awesome. I'm so grateful for it. I just, you know, and it doesn't, and it's, and it's not like steady. You know, things aren't like, I, I don't, it's not like everything's set for a year. It's, but I always get what I need when I need it. And uh, that's, that's really amazing. That, that's why I think it's give us this day our daily bread rather than give us this year our yearly bread. That uh, the universe, I think it works. You gotta walk step by step. You gotta step out into the darkness and then the light comes out and illuminates that next little bit. And then you've gotta go to the edge of that and the light comes out and illuminates the next thing that you're gonna do. And um, yeah, so uh, I wish everybody the best. I thank all the fans. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Uh, I am going to make a plug. We do have a new inquiries guy. Uh, as, as of this recording, it may change. Who knows? Uh, but he's really awesome. His name is Steve. You can contact him. Uh, there's an email in the liner notes. Again, things do change. But uh, right now it's projects at bluetablepainting.com. Do put in an inquiry uh, for uh, an army or a project. We're ready. We've got uh, a really awesome pool of painters. In fact, uh, I'm gonna do a, a sort of a state of the union for BTP as a separate video. So be sure to tune into that along with my other various rambles. Uh, thanks for tuning in and um, here's to an awesome 2014. <laughs>